Hello, so in this video we're going to be looking at how to make a melody from a set of sustained chords. So we're just going to play these in, I'm just going to make them up as we go along. Uh, this is going to be part of a series of videos, uh, it's, I don't know how long this is going to be, this is totally improvised. Uh, so there could be a series of videos or it could just be one, um, but we'll see. Alright, let's have that chord. So totally improvised, Let's, that'll do for now, and what we're just going to do is make the set and then we're going to loop that section, take off the metronome by pressing C for the click. <laughs> okay, so we're going to duplicate it, so we've got the original right back at the start and what we're going to do is going to work on this so if we highlight it all and click fixed lengths and it'll take it down to the quantization that you're on so if I was to set this to 4 there you go it's going to set it to the quantized length so we're going to set it to that so we can manipulate these into kind of a melody okay so let's just zoom in a little bit here now right, let's break these up and we'll just start messing around with the melody so we've got the d the g and the a so we could have this kind of rising melody so let's listen to that so let's have that staggered a little bit more Let's just stick with something really simple and steady, and that seems to be working. So let's just do the same for these. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to have that repeating like that. And obviously these two, uh, we're only going to have the first ones. So let's just move them over. There we go. Okay, so there's a the first idea, and seriously, I don't use half of them. Um, it's just to get ideas for other moments in the track. So, okay. So what we're going to have is we're going to have this kind of and we're just going to add some of the extra notes which I can already see where this track's going to go. Okay. And we're just going to add some bass notes in there so we're just going to, let's just say it's going to hit on A there. Let's just fill in the gaps here, let's make a kind of a repeating pattern, something very similar. So there's an idea that I instantly just don't like. So let's just go even more simple and let's just make that chord back up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take the top note and the bottom note and let's cut the middle one out. Okay, and let's repeat that and make a pattern so we have. And again, so we don't get any repetition there. And let's just have them there just because they're shorter. And let's just go check that and move that over. Okay, so let's just move them over and have that one there. 
just slightly out there and we're going to up the tempo now uh, it's just I get a feeling it's gonna be something like one three four Okay, so there's the first iteration of the chord sequence and it's now splitting up into a melody. Uh, and from there, I'll progress to the next section. Let's pick some bass. Okay, so we it's just serious improvisation here, there's nothing really happening. Um, just because I know this should be on a G, I'm just experimenting to see what else might work. So... Okay, so we know here on this chord, which would trigger like that, it'd still have a G as the middle note, which is the one we deleted. So to change that up a bit, I think I'm gonna chuck it to the A. Let's just see how that sounds. Maybe to the C. See, the C seems to work, so let's just chuck it one octave down. Okay, so there's one iteration, and now let's go to the next one, and let's just experiment with the bass being here. Okay, so we start to get these different ideas flowing. Okay, so if we take that back there and just drop that down to D, or maybe the opposite way around. So we're getting some ideas flowing there, and the reason that I'm duplicating them is so we don't kind of uh, ruin any potential ideas that we may forget later on uh, in the production, and sometimes things seem to fall different. So on this one, we are now going to hold press J to, uh, which turns the snap on and off. So if you press J, it turns it on and off. And what we're going to do is just going to reduce those down a little bit. Press J back on, so we've got snap to quantize. And what I'm going to do just for this particular melody is use the quantizer and just turn the swing up to about 70. So that'll do. Okay, so you can hear that we just we don't seem to have uh, the rhythm coming out there. So let's just zoom right in, turn in the snap off, and just reduce them so they're not overlapping, which causes them not to uh, play as individual notes. And there we go. And let's just turn these down a bit more. Okay, and then we'll do another iteration and we'll move on to the next section which is now adding a little bit of rhythm into the bass and we're just going to use one sound for now. Uh, okay, and you can see that we haven't put J back on to do quantize snap. Let's just have that rhythm for now. Let's just see what's going to come out of that. Okay, so we can hear we're getting some uh, rhythm into the actual piece now, so it's giving it a bit of bounce. So, uh, bearing in mind that it's not always going to work perfectly uh, just using one sound, because you're going to get limitations. So you can hear the track develop in there. If we just modify this,
Okay, so let's name this. Uh, we'll just call this binary because that's the name of the synth. Uh, let's help if I could spell it. Binary. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add in our battery, if I can see that on there. And we're going to pick a kick. That sounds nice. Something I'm looking for for this particular type of track. So to cheat, I'm going to put it into quarters. And we're going to go down to C1. And we're just going to draw the kick in, which puts it on every other beat. So let's just label that kick. Okay, so we'll head to the mixer and we'll just reduce the volumes a little bit and just balance them out. So, from just the standard sustained chords, we have developed through to this, which was the first idea. Then we hit the idea we kind of wanted. Uh, moving on, we put it like a, a like a staccato bass line in there, and then we developed the bass line until we got what we wanted. And then we've moved along and we've edited the length because I've added a swing. Um, it, if you're not adding swing, then you're not going to do this uh, sort of thing. But it depends what you're really aiming for. And then when you move on to here, we've got the filled-in bass line, which then this part here can expand through to the bass, and it can expand through to, well, all the different layers of the bass within the uh, the actual track. Uh, but we're focusing on the melody today. Um, so now, if we head on into Nexus, just a good, quick, easy drop-in, uh, let's go to Transleads and let's go to Pads. In fact, let's just use the Epic Pads and we'll use Airwave Transol 1, which comes free with it. Do, do, do. And if we head on into the mixer, let's just reduce the volume. And what we're going to do is we're just going to throw in Pro EQ 2. I'm just going to cut the bass off. So we're not getting any unnecessary. Uh, stuff going on there and what we're going to do is we're going to copy everything if I just drag that and copy it to that line you've still got the same name massive note one um, and if you wanted a nice tidy track we're going to call this say pads one um, once we create a section there and paste within there we get pads one listed rather than it saying um, massive note one so you can see if I'd named that before I started doing them, you get binary in the name. So let's listen. So the pads sound quite tight together and you can hardly hear the progression that's going on. As you can see, it's kind of just milling around the central bit. So there's not really much going on in terms of change to make it like kind of pop out. So let's copy it over. So we've got the original to that side, because we're editing this bit now, I'm gonna build the track in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these mid sections out and we're gonna transpose them up one octave. So if you hold shift, Okay, so you start to get a bit of a progression in there. And now we need to add some harmonizing notes in there. So depending on the kind of sequence you're working on, we're just gonna play around here. I'm gonna copy some of the notes. Let's copy that up to a D and let's just put on a C. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we start to get this kind of really open, luscious pad sequence going on. Um, let's just leave it at that for now. Uh, so we've got the original and then we've got that bit, so let's just put that to one side for now. So, all together.
Okay, so we've gone from sustained chords to making this melody. Now we're going to expand this melody even further for the... We're going to make this progressive, uh, which has just been decided right now. Because it sounds very progressive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn these individual notes into mini chords. We've done this a few times before, so let's just chuck that on D. Uh, I can tell that F's not going to work with the D, so we'll just have a G for now. Um, and there, that's not going to work. That is, that's not going to work. Uh, maybe an F on that one. Okay, so there's one first idea. Let's just uh, put the originals down here. Now I'm going to compose a little melody that goes in between there. So let's just get warp off. So usually you do these on separate parts, but I always work in one. So you can see it all working together and then you can recreate it in different areas. So that sounds quite um, sweet sounding. Let's create something sustained. So we have this kind of... Let's have something like that. So it moves along. Let's get rid of them. And the kind of pattern I went for then. And let's just knock it down one just so we can see that the melody is progressing there. Straight back up. And there we go, we have the melody in there. So from here, I will start to choose different sounds. Let's go into Massive here. And these are all my own ones, so let's stick with something familiar. Pluck Stars. And from there, I will create a... So let's separate that and just separate that there so we know that's the bit we're building there. Let's copy that over. And what we're going to copy is this melody here and we're going to chuck it into C4 there. Well, the C3 octave but within the Pluck Stars. So as you can see I've not done that right. Let's just put Pluck Stars. And let's transpose it down one octave. Get rid of that, because we've already got it here, so we haven't lost it. So let's create a duplicate. And call it Pluck Stars. Uh, and we'll call it, I don't know, CR. CHD for chord, so we're going to use that for the chord section. So let's get rid of that so we get the same name. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy these chords that we've been uh, building up. Uh, let's just go into it. And as you can see, we don't have the quantizer. So let's just chuck that somewhere at like 70%. That's quite spot on there. And we'll chuck this also up to somewhere. Let's just to, just to ease it off a little bit different. Okay, so we have one iteration there. Let's just see what it sounds like. Let's just select this one and chuck it one octave.
So with a bit of compression uh, and some uh, just a bit of control on that, that's going to be quite a nice sounding uh, wide synth in there, uh, but also boils down to the bare essentials. Um, so tied in with that, let's just go across here. You can see how we've got some blending to do. We've got to merge them two synths so they complement each other. Um, if it feels like I'm forcing them to complement each other, then we've got the wrong sounds. Uh, and personally, I think the Pluck Stars is up for the job. Maybe a slight tweak just to give it a bit of a different vibe from some of my other tracks. Um, so you can see how we've gone from literally nothing but chords all the way up to an improvised melody, which is all within what? Um, I'd say 15 minutes And it's got a nice uh, kind of chilled out tone to it so uh, that's it I'll just go saving I'd save it straight from the beginning I wouldn't do what I've just done here and not save it at all um, so I'm just gonna go into Cubase projects here and I'm gonna create a new folder uh, what should we call it well we're not gonna call it YouTube demo but for now we'll call it YouTube demo and we'll call it August because it's August tomorrow YouTube demo August. There we are. We've saved it and it's instantly backed up once my uh, backup starts here. So we've always got duplicate copies. Uh, if you don't have a backup system, get it straight on a stick, get it straight onto uh, any anything that you can put it that's not within the computer's hard drive, Dropbox, anywhere. Just send it somewhere. Um, there you go, that's a melody created from nothing but chords. And feel free to use these. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it. If uh, you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, it really does help, and it's, uh, it's really good to see that you're all still here. Right, I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.